make offers in under 60 seconds and how to get the perfect instant offer formula. What is up guys, Zach in here. And in today's video, what I really wanna do is break down my instant offer formula, really my formula out here for actually going out here and really just going out to sellers because I think so many people really complicate getting an offer, calculating it up, getting the ARV, getting the repairs and actually having true conversations with motivated sellers. So many people struggle with that. And in this video, I'm just gonna give you an instant offer formula where you don't have to pull ARV, you don't have to do repairs. Like you really, you, you don't have to think really. And that's sort of the point because I think so many people, that is the one little bottleneck that is stopping them from doing a lot of success in their wholesaling real estate business. And honestly, I am just sick of it. And that's what I'm gonna do today is really just break down how you can use this formula for yourself for success in your own wholesaling real estate business and everything like that. Before I break it down, do me a big favor, make sure you smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, guys. You see the bell right there? Hit that bell, subscribe, and comment all your questions. I'd love to help you with all your questions you have about wholesaling real estate. So without further ado, we are gonna be talking about my instant offer formula really in 60 seconds or less how you can get the best offer possible in wholesaling real estate. So let's sort of break this down, guys. I have the computer monitor right here, so let's kind of break this down and get it going. So I think the first thing we need to really talk about when it comes to wholesaling real estate is about how these offer formulas in, in wholesaling real estate are just, they have created so much doubt in people's minds. They've created so much overthinking. They've created so many issues uh, when it comes to just talking with motivated sellers doing deals, giving offers to your sellers and giving those offers accepted for as much success possible when it comes to talking to motivated sellers. And that's really the biggest problem I have seen in wholesaling real estate uh, with so many beginners and newbies out here. So that's what I want to talk about today. And that's going to be the first issue we're talking about. So let's, uh, let's talk about really quick. Let's just do a quick audio check. Actually, the audio, got to go to the first guru ad I always see on these things, but obviously just got to skip them up. And uh, yeah, so let's break this down. Can I go to the first guru ad I always see on these things? But All right, audio is perfect. So let's sort of break this down. Let's really get it. So what is the issue? So the issue is these offer formulas. Uh, these gurus make it so complicated, so stressful. I just want you guys to understand the reason why the gurus make these things so complicated and so difficult is so you get really stressed out. And so you buy the course to make it quote unquote simpler. So what the point I'm trying to teach about today, guys, is you need to simplify things. So many wholesalers do not simplify things. And honestly, if you start simplifying your process on talking to sellers and doing deals in real estate wholesaling, you're going to do fine. So that is the point. That is what we're talking about today is exactly just how to simplify that process for wholesaling because so many people get stressed out over it. So many people just overcomplicate this. And if you stop overcomplicating this, guys, I promise you, you're just going to do better. Like you're going to feel better. You're going to do better. And you're going to do more wholesaling real estate deals because your offers are just going to be so much more simplistic and you're actually going to get better deals. So without further ado, let's sort of like, let's really break this down. So this just, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here, but 90% of wholesalers right now, they do not push the sellers to the limit. They do not push it to the limit on the lowest price they're willing to take. Most of the time they have this crazy calculated offer and they don't really negotiate hard or they don't push it to the limit and they don't try to get the best price possible. And honestly, it is to their detriment why they don't do this. And it drives me crazy that so many wholesalers don't do this, but it is actually a huge issue I've seen in the wholesaling real estate community where 90% of wholesalers, they don't squeeze the deal for the best possible rate. And yes, I know if you push the deal a little too much, you might lose the deal, but most people don't even push it to a point where they're not gonna lose the deal, but they could still push a little more and still do deals. They don't really do that. And it drives me crazy that they don't do that. And honestly, right now, if you're watching this video, you should be pushing it to the limit. And what we're going to do sort of today is how to use that instant offer formula to push it to the limit, guys. And that's where you're going, guys. So if you ever watch the movie Scarface, they have that song uh, when uh, Tony Montana's getting married, uh, it push it to the limit. And, you know, it's, it's got the great, you know, great soundtrack, all 80s Miami type thing. And it's pretty cool. And the point of you watching this video is you need to push this to the limit. You need to push your wholesaling real estate offers to the limit because especially in this market, you got to push it to the limit. It's because 
your cash buyers, they're going to want a little more discounts on the properties. And sometimes the sellers, it might take them a couple of weeks or months to realize what's going on in the market. And obviously you guys see my live cold calls on Tuesdays. They go a little crazy with it, right? They, they, they get a little cuckoo uh, when it comes to doing offers and talking to motivated sellers. But honestly, if you know how to push things to the limit, you will become as successful as possible. So let's talk about my formula right now for pushing things to the limit in wholesaling real estate. So uh, right now, it's really the simple formula, right? It is giving the lowest offer possible to your seller, which I'll share the strategies I do to get the lowest possible offer for my motivated sellers. And secondly here, how to ask your cash buyer, basically, what's the most they're going to buy the property for? Because if you can use this little offer right here, getting the lowest possible offer and really not doing ARV or comps and just asking the cash buyer what they're going to buy the house for, you don't need to have this crazy, crazy complicated, like, offer because when you really look at wholesaling real estate, like from a nitty gritty perspective, it's all about what a cash buyer is willing and able to buy the property for, right? It's really nothing much about it. Like, oh, it's about getting the best deals act. No, because if the cash buyer overpays for it, then it negates the good deal, right? Really guys, if you can push these two things, you're going to do fine. And a lot of people, they get so stressed out or they try to challenge me and like, Zach, you need to, you need to spend 40 minutes calculating every offer before you give it. And yeah, that's great, but it's, it's, it doesn't work. You know, it's like if you were um, fighting and let's say boxing, for example, if I spent 30 minutes trying to figure out how to do the right move, I, some guy's going to punch me 60 times and like be done. Right. It's a lot. So there's two ways about offers, right? There's quality and quantity. And a lot of people think if I calculate what my price is going to be, it's going to just make everything so much better. It's not because in, I hate to say this, but this is the honest truth. Your seller's mind is pretty much made up of the lowest they're going to go for the property before you even talk to them. And this is going to get a lot of controversy, me stating that statement, but it's absolutely true. The words you say and the way you make the offer and the reasonings behind it, it can push it lower. But honestly, there is no piece of evidence you're going to give to a seller that's going to make them go to what the thing is worth. You can only push it to what their lowest is going to be. And obviously, if you do some initial screening where you have some motivation, they're not going to be crazy. And for example, for this, like if you have a motivated seller and the property to a cash buyer is worth $100,000, that's what a cash buyer is willing to pay it for, right? And really for this motivated seller, the lowest they're ever going to take is $70,000. If I calculate it and spend four days and nights seeing that the cash buyer, the most cash buyer would probably pay for is $100K, you spent four days trying to calculate, you're going to like go out there. And if I talk to that seller, I'm going to figure out pretty fast, like within 60 seconds, pretty much like we're saying here, what the lowest they're willing to take on the property is. Like, I, I don't even need to know uh, too much about the comps. I, I can tell what the lowest they're willing to take. And I spent in about 60 seconds or maybe two or three minutes, what their lowest is possibly going to be. And then somebody spends two days or maybe four hours figuring out the perfect formula and they just whoop, whoop my, get whooped by me because I make that offer even faster than them. And once you make a faster offer, you're going to beat the guy on the couch doing nothing all day. And that is the honest truth. It's like the guy that spends all day figuring out what to do at the gym versus the guy that just spends an extra 30 minutes at the gym. Just being there and doing it is 90% of the battle, right? And I think so many people get that really complicated. And it just it drives me crazy. Um, I see people do this all the time. And it's speed... You know, it's good to be quality with your offer, but speed is just such an untapped uh, part of this business that no one really talks about. So let's kind of talk about how, you know, how can I actually go out here and get the lowest price possible for my seller? I think so many people go crazy. Um, it, it, it's, it, it drives me crazy. And I'm getting some people like, wait, your dad says to spend, my father, Rick does not say to spend four hours calculating an offer. Okay. Yes, there's an offer you can use, but 90% of you out here are struggling with making offers. So we're going to use this instant offer formula on this one. This is not the pure thing at freeholcine.com we tell every single person to do, but I want you to understand, me and Rick are like this on, on, on the things we say. We, and I want everyone to understand this. I, I, like, I want everyone watching me understand this. You do not know what the lowest possible price your sellers want to take. You do not know that. I do not know that. Nobody knows that. The only way you're going to figure it out is by asking. Okay. No calculations you do 
it's going to help you out. Now, yes, I think everybody, if you're doing something, if you're like regular wholesaling, you should do your A. Way too much time, way too much stress. And they get just, it stops them from being successful and stops them from getting the offer. And some of them actually do that on purpose so they don't have to give an offer. It's a false sense of confidence and it drives me insane. Okay? Guys, yes, we, I do tell everyone you should probably do an offer if you can, if it doesn't paralyze you, if it does not paralyze you from making an offer. But so many of you guys get paralyzed. And if you want evidence of this, hop on the, watch my one on one calls. I get people all the time, oh, I'm trying, I, I don't know the perfect offer, so I didn't get the offer. And then they lose out to somebody else who just, just threw an offer out there. It drives me insane that so many wholesalers do it. So, Michelle, you were definitely wrong on that one. Me and Rick are together on this, but I want you to understand that, yes, we do tell people to do offers and stuff like that, but the issue is so many beginners get so stressed out over green ARV and offers, and it stops them from being successful. And I hate it, right? It's like, yes, you should stretch before you work out, but if you spend four hours stretching and only 30 minutes working out, then I'm going to tell you just to work out instead. So you spend an extra 30 extra minutes. Oh, but you said to stretch. See, this is the issue I see with these comments. Okay. Nothing wrong with Michelle, but when you sit like, oh, but I need to spend eight, all my time. You just, you start destroying your success and it drives me insane. It's just guys, a lot of you guys, the, the thing stopping you is just creating that offer formula. You get so stressed out over ARVs, so stressed out over repair costs. Let me tell you my first year in wholesaling real estate, probably my first hundred thousand dollars. I didn't know how to calculate ARV. I didn't know repair costs. I didn't know any of this stuff, but I made a hundred K. You know why? Because I got the lowest offer from my seller. I didn't do the crazy calculators. There's no way to the education starting out. N nothing. Okay. What I did is I just talked to a seller. Hey, what's the lowest you can take on this? Oh, okay. Write up the contract. Hey, Mr. Cash Buyer, how much are you going to buy this house for? How, how much? Okay. Okay. Well, that's higher than my contract. So take it. Guys, people really think wholesaling real estate is like this crazy calculation, rocket science thing. Guys, it is the art. It is literally the art of buying and selling things. This is a tried and true system of buying something and selling it. Buying something and selling it. Guys, people get so stressed out over this. How do you get really good at buying and selling? Just buy it for low, sell it for high. It just, people get so, but how much do I buy it for? Get, you just got to do it. Okay. You just got to do it. It's like a lot of people that do like garage selling and stuff. You just got to, you know what? Eh, here's a, you have to give offers so low that you're like, okay, this is a no brainer deal. Like if they take it easy, right? And that is how I get my 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar deals. And why do most wholesalers watching this? Why do they not do 60, 70, even hundred thousand dollar deals like I do? Why? Because I do not overcomplicate my offers. If somebody, if you're watching somebody like me making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in my wholesaling business, and I don't get too crazy with my offers, I lowball as much as I can, but I always push my sellers to the limit and I don't, I don't stress out over how much I should get my offer for and I just do it. Are, do you make more money than me in wholesaling? If you do, I'd love to interview you if you're not a guru. But most of you guys aren't. And you think that the thing stopping from becoming a millionaire is spending an extra hour figuring out my offer. Guys, why do you think I spend hours every single Tuesday just cold calling Fizbos and getting 70, 60, $50,000 price reductions to show you I can call someone not knowing a thing, doing no comps, and getting a 30, 20, even you know, fifty thousand dollar deal without even doing any comps or ARV or repair. Like I do some in my head, but like, why do I do it on Tuesdays to show you that you can go out just from, from in 15 minutes, get a, a signed contract from start to close on a thirty thousand dollar deal without doing crazy calculations? And the people are haters in the comments room say, but you need to do that. I spent 15 minutes doing it, okay? It drives me crazy. And you're like, what if you do it too high? They get a reduction. That like that's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you just get out of the deal with the inspection period. Worst case scenario. So many people get so 
so worked up over this and it drives me insane. You need to get the lowest price possible from your seller, then sell it to the cash buyer for the best price you can. Don't get greedy. Pigs get slaughtered in this business, okay? If you get greedy with it, okay, you're going to get destroyed. I want you guys to understand this, and I cannot stress this enough. Okay, yes, the offer formula is great. MAO, all the that, that's fine. But I find so many wholesalers get so worked up. They get they spend so much time. Some people watching this, and if this is you, I know you're watching this, and I, I don't expose you, make you feel bad, but you probably spend more time figuring out the offer price than actually talking to sellers in your marketing. That's what you do. I get people all the time. So like, oh, I need to figure out what the offer formula is before I call this uh, person. No. Guys, you got to figure out what the motivation is. I could give a hoot and toot what the property's worth. If I could find somebody that is motivated to sell the property, I can commit for them to get a really low price. And then from there, if I sort of figure out what a range of what it's worth, I know where I sort of have to be. I'm going to make a no-brain offer. If they don't take it, I'm just going to follow up with them. It, it drives me crazy. But like this is how the mindset of, a, I don't know what the way I think, but like this is how I do 40, 50, 60, $70,000 deals. And why most of the time you're not because you're overthinking things. And that is, I think it's a curse of a lot of smart people watching this. And I, I'm not calling myself not smart. I, I, I'm, I'm okay. But like so many like really smart people think they have to do this like they think we're like these crazy hedge fund managers calculating the analysis and doing a cross regression on an abacus. And then I'm putting that to the third degree. Then I minus it. Then I divide it to the fourth square. And then I divide that by half, a, uh, you know, 2.2 to the fourth. Half. It's not okay. We are buying like guys, like, I don't even know what's around me. All right. Phone, right? Buy this for a dollar, sell it for $2. This isn't complicated. We put a property under contract. We try to sell it for an extra 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, $90,000. That's what we do. That is the point of wholesaling real estate. Okay. You, you do, once you start complicating, getting cute, you start losing money. That is it. If you can really simplify this business, you will become rich. All the rich people I know, they make it super simple and easy in their wholesaling businesses. The people that get too crazy and complicated and stuff, that's when you lose out, guys and gals. That's when you lose out. I just drives me crazy. So how do you get the lowest price possible? Okay. How do you actually get the lowest price possible? I'll go this a million times. When I talk to a seller, you guys see this on my live streams. How do I get the, how do I squeeze the most out of that deal? There is uh, three, right? Yeah. There's basically three main ways to get the lowest price from your seller. You don't have to calculate AR, but you don't have to do any of this crazy stuff. Okay. You just have to do these three main things. So let's break it down. Number one, the price first method. This is a really simple one. Hey, Mr. Seller, what price are you looking to sell the property for? I can tell you straight up, the guy or gal that can give an offer or get motivation and then use one of these low-balling strategies with confidence. Did I say they say the words or with confidence, they will get the deal. Over the guy that or guy guy or gal that's super super you know techno, they're doing the calculations perfectly, but they don't have confidence with they're talking, or they don't care about the person. They only care about the offer. Because once you start calculating hard, you start caring about the offer only, and you don't care about the seller situation. And if you can care about the seller situation, build that rapport, you can get an even lower offer. It unlocks things that you can if you just care about the offer. That's another reason why I say it. And all the people talking to me right now, like I, I'll tell you straight up. All the people watching this live stream that got their first deal from watching my content, you guys can say in the comments, those people don't complicate things and they just take the action and they care about the people and they get the lowest price and they get the deals. The ones that complain to me don't get the deals. They're the ones who say, but you need to calculate it. I can tell you're broke if you do that. I'm just being completely honest. If you start, if you care about people and focus on lowballing and caring about people and rapport, you tend to do more deals. You don't tend to do more deals when you stress out over making everything perfect. Perfection is going to stop you from being successful in this business, okay? Perfection is going to stop everything. But the price first method is you're just getting the best price out of the seller. You counter at a really low offer. 
you meet in the middle or you get them, you squeeze them for the best price, and then boom, negotiate from there. Guys, you can always get a low, you can always, always get the light price lower. You can always, always get a price reduction. You can't get a price uh, addition, right? You can't. You can only, you can get a price reduction. You can always, but when you give that offer, I want everyone to understand, especially with the price, uh, with the price first method, once somebody says they want to sell for 100 and you counter at 65 and they say, well, can you do 80? Just remember, if you stay firm at 65 there, which is pretty low, you're good. You once you say 70, you're never getting back to 65. You're never getting back to that. You can get a price reduction, but that's not the best, right? You just talk about that price first method and you, you can't go up. Sometimes you stay firm at that low ball. And I'll tell you, you got to follow up. It's a little tough. It sucks in the beginning, but especially in this market, you will not regret it. Now, I'm telling you, get the price first method. And one thing I want everyone to watch this, I really want them to understand. I want them to really conceptualize in their brain. Um, and this is a big one. It took me a little bit to really find out and understand this. But like, especially in wholesaling real estate, you have to pick your uncomfortability. And what I mean about being uncomfortable, what, what, what I mean by that, right? And there's multiple ways to really uh, look at that. But either you get really uncomfortable making a lowball offer and then you get a very comfortable check or you get super comfortable with a really high offer and you feel good. But that check you get, that two $3,000 check is going to be super uncomfortable. So what type of uncomfortability would you rather have? I think so many people uh, get really confused with this, right? They they like getting um, they, they like getting very comfortable with their offers, and if you're comfortable with your offer, you're gonna you're gonna be very uncomfortable with the money you make. So I like being very uncomfortable getting an offer, and I kind of thrive in uncomfortability, and I, that's a weird thing to say, but they say that all the time. You got to be uncomfortable to grow, and that's always something I've always lived by. But honestly, you have to become super, super stressed, not stressed, but like uncomfortable that offer. And once you do that, you're going to get very comfortable deals. And this has always been the thing I've been saying. I always get asked this, like, Zach, how do you do big deals? I do big deals because I got big confidence and I got big confidence and I give very low offers. Big deals are equal to low offers. Big offers equal to low deals. I want you guys to have that connotation in your mind. Doing a $40,000 deal is the same thing as doing a $10,000 deal or a $5,000 deal. It takes no more effort to do that. You literally make what? Seven, eight times more money by just lowballing. That's like giving eight offers and eight contracts and eight cash. Uh, just you literally just by lowballing, do 60 seconds. To make a more of a lowball offer, I'm guessing it, it, it literally takes zero. It literally takes an extra, let's say, two seconds to eight x your profit in wholesaling. An extra two seconds to make that extra lowball attempt. Wouldn't you say that's worth it? I, I can go on this live and scream about this all day and tell you all about how to do this the right way, but it's really up to you. Okay. And I know why I, I, I don't know if I'm preaching to some somebody or nobody right now, but at least somebody who wants to change their life can listen to this info. If you're okay, not if you're okay making the amount of money you're at right now, don't take my advice. But if you find that you're struggling with your offers, you gotta start lowballing. I've been telling everyone about this. Like if you are struggling with your low balls, you will be struggling. Just if you're struggling to give a low ball offer, you're gonna struggle to get big deals. And you got to pick which one you're, you're comfortable with, right? I am at the point right now, guys and gals, where I have done so stinking many lowball offers. I am extremely comfortable giving to them. It is literally as comfortable as getting a high offer. I, I don't feel any better or worse at that. And unfortunately, I've been at that point where it, it drives me crazy. But uh, so many wholesalers get really stressed out over that. And I don't know why. Uh, I don't understand it. But. Uh, it, it drives me crazy, but yeah, I, I just think so many people get really stressed out over that. Right. And I just, I want people to understand that. So what's the next tactic? The next tactics one, I always say it's called the good cop, bad cop method. And why I love the good cop, bad cop method is because it's the best one out here because it's like, all right. So 
we have the Miami Dolphins game in the little corner right there. So I'm just, just doing a little peek, you know, just like a little, just, you know, a little, 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 little peek here and there. You know, saw the third down play. That's great. Uh, but I'm focused on this, guys. Like, whole, like wholesaling and giving this information is always my priority, and the Dolphins never get a Monday night game or whatever. But the reason why the good cop, bad cop method is because we're watching football. And the one thing about football, which I really like, is what they call the free play. And what the free play is, if I'm the quarterback, and this is going to be really, this is probably going to go over, over a lot of people's heads. If you're watching international, I'm sorry. But there's this thing called the free play. Which basically means it's like any – okay. It's like um, – I don't know how to describe this in like a soccer term. Um, but in American football, you have a free play where you literally can do whatever you want during that play pretty much. You can get interception. You can throw it, throw it deep. And if somebody picks it off or something bad happens, it doesn't – you get a turnover it doesn't, because the person went off sides. And that is what the good cop, bad cop method is. You can literally test the limits. It's okay. I want to say the good cop, bad cop method. The equi equivalent to that is just having a undo button. Okay. It's like if you ever played Fallout, right? I love Fallout. And a lot, you sometimes you can save it and then play the game. And then if something bad happened, you can uh, go back to your last save and then go to back to that point. Um, it was kind of like that uh, Modern Warfare 2. You kind of had the flare, right? Um, I don't like that, but you know what I mean. The reason why I love the good cop, bad cop method is because you can go, like, hit pause. Given all, hey, Mr. Seller, would you take $50,000? Screw you, Zach. Get out of my dang house. And we're like, got it. Undo. Go back in time. And now you're back at that point. That's what the good cop, bad cop method do. You can literally hit the redo button. It's a free play. The defensive lineman went off sides. Throw for the Hail Mary, right? And the good cop, bad cop method works. I'm going to call it the free play method. It's actually really, really cool. The reason why I love it so much is because you can go pretty much blame an offer on somebody. So uh, one thing I tell you, so if I have a guy, you know, let's call him Todd, my partner, right? And I'm saying, hey, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I was talking to my buddy Todd here and, you know, we're, we're looking to buy the house. He, he was talking to me before we, uh, before I came here and I knew the condition of the house and he told me he wanted to buy this house for like $55,000. You said, shut up. Shut up. Blank expression. I want to see what the reaction is. $55,000? What are you talking? No way I'm taking $55,000. That is stupid. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I'm, Todd, I'm hitting that reset button. Todd's crazy. <laughs> that boy, crazy. That's why he doesn't talk about prices. Because if he talks about prices, he'd be doing that at 55 with you, which I know – it is crazy because I'm just going off his reaction. I mean, I mean, wh where were you at? I was at like 70. Okay, you're at 70. Todd's at 55, which I, I knew was not going to work. Um, I just, you know, I he'd feel bad if I didn't mention that. And I don't want to get a talking to him from Todd, you know. I mean, if you're at 55, if he's at 55 and you're at 75, hmm, I mean, can we meet in the middle like – I don't know, 62, makes sense. 65, Todd's going to come. We, we got to do 62. 63, and we're fine. I would like to do 63, but you know what? If I did 63, I mean, can we get something done today? Sure, okay, fine, 63. Boom, do the deal, right? The reason why that good cop, bad cop method works so well, I've done it so many times, is because it's like I could literally say five bucks. It doesn't matter. Todd did that, not me. Todd's the crazy dude. You know, you know, my partner Emily, you know, she's the nutty one, right? She always wants the low ball offer, right? Like you can't get in trouble with that. It's the free play. It's clear, it's hitting that reverse button. That's why it works so well in wholesaling real estate. So many people get really stressed out over that, right? What I can tell you, boys and gals, is use the good cop, bad cop method. Remember, guys, on the bottom right hand corner at freewholesaling.com. Uh if you want to see it there at the top left hand uh, corner right there at uh, freewholesaling.com. Uh, I tell you this straight up, guys, you can actually go and learn wholesaling real estate, low ball offers, everything like that, absolutely for free. Uh, That's where I break down exactly how to get into wholesaling real estate and my entire process, right? Freewholesaling.com, that's where it's all at. That's where I tell everyone to be at, right? But the good cop, bad cop method, guys, I told everyone here how to do it forever. It works really, really well. 
Next one here is the low ball, or what I say is the low ball with a reason method. I think the low ball with a reason method is really good. Uh, but what I can tell you straight up is the low ball with a reason uh, is probably not my favorite one. And this is kind of just saying, hey, Mr. Seller, would you do $55 for $1,000 for the house? And they say no, and they're mad at you. Now they're mad at you for getting that offer. That's why I like the good cop, bad cop. If you were going to do this method, which half the people listening, or not half, I'd say a quarter, hopefully 10%, but maybe a quarter, or they're going to look at me and say, Zach told me to lowball. You know what I'm going to do then? I'm, you know what? I'm just going to straight up lowball. I'm going to, I'm going to skip whatever Zach said, you know. I, the good cop, bad cop method seems okay, but that's an extra five minutes of work. And ugh, why would I do an extra five minutes of work, right? That's terrible. I'm just going to straight up just say, can you do 55000 Guys, you're going to be a big dummy if you do that because they're going to be mad at you. You're not going to get an offer. And then somebody who actually listens to my advice is actually going to go and get the deal. It's so, <laughs> it's so funny how many times wholesalers will like watch my content, watch my stuff. And they, they, they'll tell me in my face, they know what I'm saying, but then they don't do the thing I say. And the low ball offer with a reason is probably going to be the best one, but like, Hey, Mr. Seller, because it needs these foundation issues because of X, Y, and Z new roof, all this, I'm going to have to be at 55. That's not bad. Not my favorite, but not bad. Okay. And I, I've definitely seen worse out there. So Give it to you there, but uh, the low ball with a reason, I'm not the biggest fan um, of it, but you can do it. That is the third method of it, so you can do it. But overall, my message for you, if you are going to give these offers, especially the really quick ones, if you're going to do it within 60 seconds, you don't do ARV, you don't do offer price, you do none of these things, uh, my number one piece of advice is just go for no. So if you're talking to me and you're asking the sentence like, Zach, how much should I offer the seller, right? And this is one I always get, you know, Zach, how much should I offer my motivated seller? And honestly, just say, hey, Will, do you think the seller is going to say no to this? And really, you go to that sentence, you know, go for no. If you just ask her, hey, I'm going to go for no. Once you go for no, I promise you, you're going to give lower offers your sellers are going to get really upset a little, but hey, you got the reasoning why and you're going to do fine with that. You're going to start doing deals and you're going to get big deals. And so I get asked this question like, Zach, how much do my offers be? Go for no. Once you go for no, you can't get in trouble, guys. And the last part is like, your offer should honestly scare you. And if you ever watch my Tuesday live streams where I cold call sellers live, and I had a buzzer beater last week. I'm not going to blow smoke up my butt, but um, I had about an hour, 15 minutes of terrible calls. And then the last 10 minutes I had a $70,000 price reduction. And it's kind of like that sometimes where like nothing hits, nothing hits. And then the final last part, it just hits. It's like fishing, you know, I'll spend six hours fishing, get up at like 4 a.m. And then, you know, I like, I'm super tired. And then, you know what, let's do one more cast. And I do one more cast and then boom, huge sailfish, big marlin, something crazy, right? And it's so funny because it's always like the last cast, right? It's the one you don't care about, right? And it's uh, it's so funny uh, the way the stuff works. But yeah, guys, I just want you guys to understand. You have to just keep giving the offers. And you have to be consistent with it. But your offer should make you nervous just thinking about it, right? And if you aren't nervous with your low ball offers, you're just going to get destroyed. And so make sure the offer scares you. And it should scare to the point where – you just do it anyway, and you do it so many times it doesn't scare you anymore. There's no lowball offer that scares me, but I still go for it now. And that is how I'm successful in my wholesaling real estate business. So that is kind of my presentation. That is my um, overall philosophy on this. I think so many people get confused of what I have to say, or they get confused on uh, my philosophy on these things. But honestly, it all comes down to going for a no, and you're going to do fine. So let me go over some questions really quick. Let's see what uh, questions y'all have for me. And uh, let's break this down. So uh, I am, guys, you all wonder how much I love y'all. We have a Dolphins game right now. And I'm spending my time with you guys. Okay. I'm going to get a quick peek here and there. But 
I'll tell you straight up. I, I, I really, my number one passion is learning is wholesaling real estate. And if it's between watching football and wholesaling, wholesaling wins all day, uh, my business. Uh, so number my, my family comes first, my health comes second, and then my money, my business has come third and then dolphins and fun stuff and stuff like that. Right. That is how I pretty much put it there. And, you know, my family say, Oh, you should do your, your health first. Health's okay. Family's more, most important, right? Right. But like, that's the way I look at it. So business, I would say me helping people out. I call this a charity what I'm doing because I don't get paid. I don't get paid for the guru stuff uh, for this, but I just give it for free. And that's honestly what I found the best success for the people just helping people out. So uh, I am spending my time doing this, helping you guys out because I want you guys to understand this, guys. I do not go on here uh, to make myself feel. I do this to help the people. I don't do it to make myself feel good. I do this to help the people out. And if I can help one person right now change their life, there are so many single moms and single dads that watch this stuff that they get their first deal and their life is completely changed. It helps everybody. And it just, it makes me feel good in my heart that I can give the gift of wholesaling real estate to somebody, you know, it's like, give the gift uh, that keeps on giving, right? And the gift that always keeps on giving that I've always seen is the gift of making money. And I've always learned the quote, and I love this quote, you know, Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but teach a man a fish or a person or the fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. And so, yes, I, I, I do. I donate to charity. I do all this stuff. I, I don't talk about it because I'm not trying to get satisfaction from somebody. I don't get the point of charity work when you're going to record it. Right. I, lo I love the gurus. I've seen this all the time that will give a homeless man a hundred bucks and then they'll be like this. Hey, here's a hundred dollars. Here's a yeah, yeah, I'm getting, yeah, yeah. Here's a hundred dollars. Have a great day. Guys, you pull up on a homeless man with a camera and you hand them money, they're gonna look at you weird. Have you ever noticed every time a guru does that, the homeless guy or gal looks at him like guys, I've given money to homeless people. They don't come up to you. When you come up to you, they don't look weird. Okay? They look happy and grateful. You throw a camera in their face, it's gonna look weird. I want you guys to just stop these gurus that do that. It is so funny. Um, every single time I do that, here's a hundred dollars and then they make it into like a YouTube video. It's, it's the funniest thing ever, but, um, no guys, I don't talk about it, but like, I look at this as a case of charity because like, if I could teach that hundreds of thousands of people how to actually make hundreds of thousands of dollars in wholesaling, um, and they don't have to live their life. No, it's not feeding the homeless or something like that, but, um, it produces hundreds of millions of dollars of income from you guys learning from me, which. I can't produce my own. I, I can't make a hundred million a year. And I say that humbly. Okay. Like I can humbly tell you, I do not make a hundred million dollars a year in profit personally for myself. And that might be shocking. That might, you got might look at me and think I'm a billionaire already, but I am not. And uh, <laughs> just funny, but like, no, but I can easily teach people how to wholesale and collectively they can always make a hundred million a year. So I think the power of me doing that's way better. Right. And I think within, Maybe a decade, I can have people put a billion dollars a year in wholesaling. I, I don't think that's too far fetched, uh, where I probably can't do that, right? But um, it's insane. So that's the point, guys. That's what I'm trying to show you guys. If you want to learn wholesaling real estate for free, just go to freehealthsing.com and uh, let me teach some people how to wholesale real estate for free. Uh, let's see here. I can probably, it's just not as good. Like that, that false start, first of the play of the game, drove me crazy, but. We're, uh, we're eyeing both of them, but not too bad. Not too bad. Are they in? Is that most in? Yeah, most in. All right. So keep my eyes on the prize, guys. But uh, yeah. So let's see. All right. So let's look at the top here. So yeah, we're doing some one-on-ones tonight. We're helping the people out. So I got the camera here. I got the thing here. We didn't really set it up too much tonight. But hey, we're going to do what we do, right? Uh, that's always a good one. You know, I know Justin listens to me on this one and it's true, but like if you ask the motivated seller, if they'll take a dollar for the property, that's a lot, like, honestly, they're like, oh, I won't take a dollar. Well, I mean, we'd take $2. So we'd, no, I'll take 40. And then you get the lowest price from them, right? That's the point, guys and gals. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Dropping gems. Appreciate it, Miles. Appreciate it. Two has got to stop running. All right. Um, it's always funny though. 
But uh, evening, Zach. I was talking to a, a friend this weekend, and he said he spoke to a seller who built his house, but only the first floor, and he completed in the second, third, or not. He was asking, one point three million, and it is by a lake here in San Diego. But he was answering uh, your questions. Uh, wants to leave a Cali and do away with the house. Said to finish the house another three hundred k. Told my friend we should just offer him, and uh, and we have not even done comps. That's the, you just do it, right? And then just get the lowest you'll take, and then maybe you can. I would like with a deal like that, right? It might not be a deal when ARVs are that high. It's it's actually sort of difficult to do. But one thing I can give to you, Swordfish, zero zero wait zero 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 seven, is just get the lowest possible. So you know what? Let me let me talk to my partner about this. And you can always go back and do offers, right? Like the reason I say is like just do the work and get the lowest they can, and then go from there, right? Uh, yeah, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hundred million from the people. That's what I'm talking about. Zach, I'm in South Florida. Houses are in 80k here. They're way more expensive. Can you still wholesale houses and win, bro? My the average ARV in my market here in uh, Treasure Coast area is 450 thousand. And I'm doing sixty thousand dollar deals. I, I I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like, yeah, your average deal might be five fifty, six hundred, a little higher than mine. But like, dude, you can still wholesale houses. I, I, I any virtual if you're doing so much. But like, um, dude, I got a deal in South Florida. I bought for one fifty, sold for two twenty. I have it on my vlog, Palm Beach, uh, West Palm Beach. Like, I'm just guys. A lot of people. I'm not saying you're complaining, Michael. But a lot of people have this mindset, oh, I can't wholesale here. Oh. I've had one guy, I remember I did an $80,000 deal in Palm Beach County, and I still do deals in South Florida. It's like, what, 30 minutes from me? Um, but like, uh, I can't do deals in South Florida, Zach. I just did an $80,000 deal in South Florida, wholesaling it, locked it up for 200. And I think it's so funny because like once people see, they're like, oh, okay. Because then the mindset just shifts. And I'm like, why did I have to tell you that for you to actually think you can actually wholesale here? Like, just, just do it, right? And I'm, I'm like, Shia LaBeouf, just do it! <laughs> you know? Uh, but, like, it, it drives me crazy. Don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> but, like, guys, you just got to do it. And, honestly, the worst case scenario, you just don't get a deal. The best case scenario, you do deals. It's up to you, right? So, Yeah. So uh, let's do some one-on-one -on -one calls. Let's kind of talk to some people and uh, see what questions you guys have. And uh, we'll break it down, guys. So first one, I got Christian's counting money. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? How much money you got there? Uh, I'm a barber, bro. This is not even wholesaling. I'm trying to start wholesaling, bro. This All right. I, like, I appreciate the hustle. Yeah. So I actually just quit my job or quit the barber shop. I've been cutting nine years to pursue wholesale. But there's only one step, uh, one thing that's stopping me, bro, and I just have a question regarding that, um, which is the assignment of contract. Okay, so to my what area, area? Uh, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, bro. Yeah. Okay. So, so to my understanding, of course, there's a lot of things that go behind it. You can double close if you have a making a large profit, and you know sellers are not supposed to know how much you make or the buyer or whatnot. Every situation is different. I understand that, right? Now, my issue here is this. Um, when you sign a purchase agreement with the seller, uh, you have to assign the uh, assignment of contract over to the seller. Of course, the seller, uh, I mean, the buyer is yeah, not yeah. something uh, saying, you know, it pretty much uh, says that you have to, he has to follow your assignment of purchase of uh, contract, correct? So, he's pretty much going to see the amount that you're making. Uh, yeah. And to my buying your contract. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's just what I'm kind of like confused though, because I'm over here hearing that they're not supposed to know, but yet when you assign that assignment of contract, they will actually know because they have to read your purchase agreement and it's going to see how much you lock, got it locked up for. And now they're seeing how much you're selling it to them. So they're going to see their profit, which I understand. I understand that, hey, they should not care uh, how much you're making. If it's a good deal to them, you know, who cares uh, how much you're making, how much, as long as it, it's a good deal. But, hey, you know, you got a lot of gurus, a lot of snakes out there trying to 
cut you out of the deal or whatnot. So my question is, so there's no way around that. Like whenever you sign the assignment of contract, pretty much the buyer automatically has to see whatever you locked it up for. And there's no way of avoiding uh, to see how much you're making. Correct. I mean, now it, this is literally a fingers crossed game, hoping they won't go behind your back. If they see the, I know I, I seen your uh, uh, assignment of contract with states, you know, they, they cannot talk to the seller. They cannot go behind your back, but Hey, you know, they, they'll still might do it. You know, we, let's be realistic about it. So that's my question pretty much, bro. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm making sense or whatnot, but there's no way around that. They must see uh, exactly how much you're making. Correct. Like, yeah. You're working on the wrong thing, man. And that I'm just saying this nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Go this ahead. is a question I get from people that haven't done many deals. Okay. And once you get into it, mm -hmm. You start change, like I'll tell you this straight up. My biggest issue starting out was I'm like, there's no way somebody's gonna sell their house for 30% under what it's worth. There's no way. Everyone, everyone around me is lying. It never even happened. And then it happened, and I'm like, okay, I'm a believer. Now, let me give you advice from somebody who has multiple times this year, people have tried to steal 70, 80, even 90 thousand dollar deals from me. Tried. Put court actions and injunctions and crazy stuff. Try to steal my personal deals. Personally, okay? Mm -hmm. Zero times they've been from cash buyers. Zero. Zero. Because I feed my cash buyers. I feed them. Do you have a favorite football team? Uh, man, it's crazy, bro. I don't watch sports. Not you even soccer. Sports. All right. I don't even like soccer, bro. No sports. All right. We're just cutting hair and making money, bro. <laughs> Bet. All right. So have you ever got the expression, you know, feed me? Yeah. Feed me these deals? Bro, yeah. I feed my cash buyers. I give them deals, dude. And here's the problem. I am like the plug to them, right? Yeah. And the point is I give my cash buyers really good deals. And I still make a ton of money. And they know I make a ton of money. But if they're buying a deal for me and I lock it up for 80, I sell it to them for 100 and they make 120, they're making 20K. And if they go on the MLS – they're making like 10 or five. So they have an incentive to buy from me, even though they make, they're going to make more money on me. Mm -hmm. The problem is if they try to screw me on one deal, they lose out on the 20 deals I'm going to send them for the year. And so they don't want to be mean to me. I always give the best. Okay. I don't, I'm not mean to my sellers. I make sure my cash buyers buy. I make sure they make money. I want them to be, I want them to be fed. Well, not too much. Don't get a little chubby. But like just enough where they can make a ton of money. It's really good, right? And so the one thing I've always seen is the people that try to screw me out of a deal are people that always aren't being well-fed. If you're being well-fed and you're doing getting deals from me, you're happy with me, you know I'm making money, but you're like, that's good to make 30K, which means you're going to get more of incentive to do more deals and then you're going to feed me. It's always the people that are broke. It's always the guy that says, I'm so mad this guy's making $60,000. And I'm not making any money. I'm trying to get, I'm gonna, let me screw this guy. He makes too much money. And those are other, those are just broke wholesalers. The biggest offender I've always had when I started out in this business were older wholesalers that work, weren't making a lot of money. I remember one specific instance, this guy was making, I think, quarter million a year. And he's been doing it for decades. This 18 year old kid is coming around making uh, 150, 200K a year. And he's destroying, I'm destroying this older guy. Just not my dad, this older gentleman, white hair, right? So he tries to steal my deal three times, put affidavits, all this stuff. And I, I had to go to court and he was only upset because he was broke. He was personally, his ego was affected that 18 year old was destroying him on appointments. And it's always that type of person that tries to steal your deal. Now, the point is, I always ask every cash buyer, and once you go through fearlessing.com, you'll sort of understand this. I ask every single cash buyer this one question. Hey, Mr. Cash Buyer, if I was going to make $100,000 on this deal I'm about to give to you right now, but you got it for the purchase price of 120 k and you know I locked it up for 20 k and I make $100,000 assignment fee, are you okay with that? Straight up in the eye. If they say no, which, dude, 10 or 20% of them say no, Okay, no big deal. I'm not going to give the deal. They have to go through that gauntlet. I don't care. I want them to say, hey, Christian, I don't care. As long as you get it for the price you say, I'm making money. I'm being fed. We're fine. That's it, right? 
And once you ask them that question, which most gurus never ask, then it's fine. Because once they find out you're making only 60,000, they're like, oh, okay, whatever. Right? He's not making 100. It's, uh, it's always so funny because um, it, it drives me crazy. But yeah, it, it's, it's always like when you go from a um, eating at a fancy restaurant, right? I went to a fancy restaurant a, a month ago. And everything on the menu was like 150 bucks. It was stupid. Stupid. And then like you go to the other side of the menu and everything's like 20 bucks and you think it's a deal. Like 20 bucks for like three clams. It's like, but it seems like a deal because you just got this crazy price in your head and now you're price shocked. Um, it, it's kind of funny. Like actually, no, it's kind of like gas on boats because uh, it's like six bucks a gallon on the water you go and there's like 320. But really, if you ask your cash buyer that question, it's fine, right? It's always the greedy people uh, that never do it well. But yeah, you're, you're stressed out over it. Remember, they're buying your contract. You could write the stupidest thing on your contract. You know, buyer agrees to pay the seller 40K at closing. They don't know. They didn't read the contract. And this is a legitimate business. So they are buying the contract from you. Now, when you double close, they're buying the house from you, but they're buying a contract. So they should see you're literally selling a piece of paper. If you spent $50,000 on a, uh, let's say you spent $50,000 on a pair of shoes and it's a closed box. You'd want to see the shoes first, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, no. Uh, as, as you said earlier, I know the proof of concept is there that people, yeah. you could actually lock up a deal for 10000 20000 I know that for a fact. It's just that, well, two things. When you're starting off, you hear all this stuff about fine cash buyers and cash buyers. And there's a lot of people who also are wholesalers that, what do they call it? Daisy, Daisy chain. Daisy chain. You know, yeah, all that stuff. So, Pretty much what you just said is just have uh, maybe even five or legitimate cash buyers that you feed them well. That way, that incident, you can avoid all those incidents. Now now I see the importance of that. Because see, I'm over here struggling having to find all these cash buyers. And at the end of the day, you don't know who is a snake and who is a rat until they actually. Yeah, you, you actually do. It's really yeah. easy. Like I said, and I, bro, you're asking great questions. Mm -hmm. And these, these are really good questions. Okay. So I applaud you for this because. I promise you there's probably 50 people in here that have the same question. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, like I said before, who are the people I told you that try to get sneaky out of the deal and try to screw you on a deal? Broke who ones, the haters, the ones that ain't got ones, right? Yeah, exactly. And cash buyers. If someone can buy a house for 200K cash right now in their bank account, are they broke? Probably not. So they don't really like, they don't want to screw you, right? They're usually good people. Right. Not, I mean, they're good business people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they don't really like if they're millionaires, like what, what's the point of screwing a kid out of 50 K, right? The broke Daisy channel. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> and so that's what I've always found. Um, and the cash buyers, if they have the money in their bank account, they're good to go. So yeah, th that's honestly what I found. And asking questions like, Hey, how many houses have you bought from wholesalers the past year? Or how many houses you bought in the past year? There's no Daisy chainers that can prove that to me. I've never had one. Right. Okay. And I, Hey, Thank you, bro. As I said, I was just wondering if there was any way of a because see, I mean, I know there's some guys, as you said, that are struggling with the basics. I, I'm more, you know, mentally uh, struggling with like more complicated stuff. And again, like, for example, um, I know that there's this thing double close. So that's so the seller and the buyer won't see. And I'm confused because I'm like, OK, the whole point is for the also for the buyer not to see that how much you're making. But yet when they sign the assignment of contract, they're actually going to see what you're making. So you're like, so what's the point? What's the whole point of double closing if it's supposed to be? So none of the both parties will see what you're making, but yeah. It's the seller, buyer. not the buyer. Ah, okay, okay, cool. It's the seller, not the buyer and most of the time. It was also for the buyer as well. Okay, cool. And sometimes uh, most buyers, sometimes they get uncomfortable when you get to the seven year, eight, even 100,000. Yeah. They just want to be safe. But it's really insurance for the seller not to go crazy. Okay, cool. That's the honest truth. Right, right. Because awesome. the seller doesn't usually have a lot of money, and so they could get greedy yeah. versus the cash buyer. Okay. But you're in Memphis. Yes, sir. Uh, the after repair values are usually a lot lower there. Mm -hmm. You're not really pushing much over 250, 200. You're mm -hmm. mostly dealing with 50, 60, 70. Yeah. So you're not going to get insanely high deals, kind of like I said before, but you're going to get a lot of. Um, volume on them yeah so uh, it's kind of a catch catch 22 but um, Memphis there's a lot of cash buyers there 
So a lot, a lot of them know the game. And yeah. most of them are rentals. And yeah. they care about the cap rate. That's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because on Facebook Marketplace, you literally put, you know, Memphis uh, wholesale or off market, and there's like 30 groups. I'm actually yeah. living in Horn Lake, Mississippi. And here, uh, like you look it up on Facebook and there's barely any movement. You don't even hear about a lot of cash buyers. It's actually more in Memphis. I'm like 10 minutes away from Memphis, but but yeah, bro. Uh, definitely appreciate the, the information and your knowledge, bro, for taking the time to actually, you know, set aside from your personal time or you being with your family to teach us guys. That means a lot, bro. Uh, of course, man. You're not the first barber I've helped out make uh, <laughs> make the first deal, dude. So, right, dude. It's a hustle mentality, isn't it? Oh yeah, it, it, it is. Dude. Definitely. Definitely. And so, like, you use that mindset for wholesaling. It works. For, some people they don't have that right, um, but like, you already know being a barber, dude. And like, it's it's half of it. You know, is kind of customer service to a point. Half of its skill. A lot of it's marketing. No one ever like talks about that, man. Mm -hmm. And really, you use. Because I always look at – it's like a boat, dude. You're rowing in that barber boat or that, uh, you know, you're cutting hair boat. That's good. Bro, if you just get better oars in a nicer boat, which is wholesaling, and you row is just as hard, you can go even farther. It's like having a bike versus running, man. If you allow me to speak on what you just said, I, I see this as a uh, as a vehicle, right? So what's, what's the whole point of a Ferrari? Uh, so what's the difference between a Ferrari and a 1980 Honda? I mean, it's a car. It takes you to point A to point B. Yeah. You so know, it drives, it reverses. I mean, so what's the point? One is, of course, status. One costs more than the other. So what do I mean by this? So they're called vehicles. A job is a vehicle. You can work at McDonald's. That's making you money. You can cut hair. That's making you money. You can work at a warehouse. That makes you money. But notice that some vehicle, just like a Ferrari, is going to go way faster than the Honda I just spoke about. Same goes with a job. Some jobs go faster than others, right? Uh, so what I'm doing here, again, I'm a successful barber or whatnot, but I'm having to trade a lot of my time, bro. Any Anybody that's listening here that's a barber, they know that if they don't have nobody in a chair, they're not making money. And that it's very time consuming and you have to be there all the time. And, and don't get me wrong, it's good money, man, but you just have to be there. And wholesaling, I've seen that it's allowed you, as you say, to have that financial freedom, to have that time freedom, to do when, whatever you want, whenever you want, whatever you want. You know, and I'm just trying to escape that routine. I know that people have it worse than I. There's people, as you said, single mothers, uh, single fathers out there. I'm, I mean, I, I'm good. I mean, I can show you like, um, I'm, I mean, it's good. But it's just, I'm, I'm trying to move now to value my time, you know? Yeah. Uh, right. Just sit, bro. It's a different mindset because you're not, yeah. you're not wholesaling because like you need the money, right? Like, but you're doing it to improve it, right? And that's always the thing, right? Like. It's kind of a it, – it's cool. And kind of like the Ferrari, my last statement for you here would be if I'm a cash buyer and I'm looking to buy a Ferrari, right, which I definitely will not buy Reynolds, yeah. but whatever. All right. I got Reynolds that are worth way more than Ferraris, but I can go for another day. If I want to buy a Ferrari for half a million dollars, okay, like a new whatever. I don't know what they're called. Half a million, all right? And somebody wholesales it. They lock it up for 400 and then they want to sell it to me for 450 I'm getting a 50 k deal on a new Ferrari, never been touched. Am I going to say to him, hey, no, no, you, you're going to make 50K on this? Does the value of the Ferrari change based on what he has under contract for? No. So I could care less. I'm getting a deal. And that is the point. If I go to the Ferrari dealership and buy it for 500, I, bro, you could get it locked up for 100. All right. As long as it's clean, legal, and schmeagle and all that, I'm good to go. Right. And that's how smart cash buyers. They don't get half a million in their bank account to buy property from being dumb and greedy and terrible, right? Right. Abundance is how you make a ton of money. And they don't think like that. Now, the greedy, broke people, that's how they do it. Not calling broke people greedy, but like the people that are going to be greedy are most likely going to be broke. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense, bro. 100%. As I said, bro, appreciate your time, bro. Appreciate yep. it. Let me know if you got any more questions. Yes, sir. Action right here, guys. First deal in Memphis today, searching for buyers. So, dude. Really? There's, dude, there's so many people in Memphis, man. Everyone's getting deals, man. Okay, nice. Perfect. All right. Appreciate it, man. Let me know if you got any questions. Yes, sir. Boom. All right. We, for next here, we got uh, Chevelle. Hello. Zach. Hey, how's it going? 
Hi, it's, it's going good. How are you? What's up? How can I help you out? Okay, so since the last time we spoke, I've been taking action. And um, I just want to give a shout out to you and your dad for actually giving us information that's really helpful and not offering a half-hearted course for a bunch of money and then not being available to help us out with questions when we need it. So I really, really appreciate that. Appreciate it. I think it's an affordable price. So I think most people can afford to take it. Take it. So um, yeah, no, no worries. What, what's up? How can I help you out? Love helping okay. people out. <laughs> Thank you. So basically, um, so I've been um, calling the, the FISBOs and I've also been building up um, a virtual driving for dollars list because remember, I'm in New York City. So um, so I have I've, I've um, made a list of 100 um, uh, properties so far, right? So I've been going to True People Search and some of the, the properties for one person, they'll have like 10 records for one person. And then going through each record, it, it takes a lot of time to try to find it for one property. So in that case, would you suggest trying to get the, um, would you, I mean, how do you feel about that? Would, was that something that you, that you did going through like 20 different records on one person? I would go through the, wire, the first three and go through the wirelesses if I could, can. Okay. Too, too okay. Much. Usually the top three ones and usually the first two wireless ones are going to be the best. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'll do that. And as for the for sale by owner, I spoke with um I spoke with a woman last night. Her husband was in the background. They have um a, a property for sale. It's zone commercial and residential. The top floor is um residential. It was a bike shop. They had a bike business um because of COVID and um you know not being able to get parts and things like that. They they had to go out of business. So now they're trying to sell it. Um the thing okay. is the husband told the wife to tell me that they didn't want to take an offer unless someone came out to see the property first and I'm nowhere near the property. Okay. Where's the deal at? In Ohio. Okay. Well, you can have a partner go buy it. Um, I don't have, I don't have a partner. Okay. A cash buyer then. Okay. But I don't have it. I don't have it under. I don't have it under contract yet. We would. We we spoke for the first time yesterday, and they were just. The wife was just telling me everything that was going on, and um, I, I told them that I would speak with my partner, aka you, and then get back to them. But I I I really don't. Um, I didn't. Well, I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, we have to agree on a price first, and then get that in writing. And then I'll actually come out there. Mm, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, I'm gonna call. I'm. We're scheduled um, to speak tomorrow. Um, tomorrow night. So I'll give her a call tomorrow night and I'll tell her. Awesome. Get it going. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate. It. Have a great one, Chevelle. Okay. You too. Bye. All right. Next year we got Marco. Oh, hey Zach. How's it going? I'm blessed, dude. What's up? Uh, first time calling you. I usually talk to your dad. So. Awesome, man. How nice can I help you out, dude? Yeah, I actually have a, a question. I was getting a call today from a motivated uh, seller, but after talking to him, he said that he had a mortgage still on the house, so I don't know how that would work, if you could wholesale that. Yeah, um, so I think – let me look this up. Yeah. Um, how many houses have a mortgage? So it looks like – 64, 65% of properties in the U.S. have a mortgage on it. Yeah. So that means that most houses you deal with are going to have a mortgage on it, right? So we're sure. not going to freak out over that, right? Okay. Now, how mortgages work? It's just a loan, dude. And yeah. most mortgages are worth way less than what the property's worth because you got to do that down payment. So let just yeah. really quick, I don't have the iPad on me. Actually, let's just do even quicker numbers. If the house, you agree to buy it for 100 and you can sell it for 120 at cash bar, you make 20K profit, right? Yeah. Let's say there's a fifth, let's say there's a $60,000 mortgage. That means a uh, cash buyer gives 120K to title company, 100K goes to seller, 20K goes to you, right? You follow? Yeah. So the seller is going to get actually $40,000. 
because sixty thousand dollars is just going to go to the bank. So title company gets hundred k, sixty k to bank, or you know, how much they owe? Anyway, sixty k to bank, forty thousand to seller. Yeah, that's how it works. That's why we pay the title company because they deal with all the hassle of it. Okay, so same thing with the lien. If there's a five thousand dollar tax lien because they didn't pay their taxes, yeah, and you agree to buy it for a hundred thousand, that means at closing seller gets ninety five. Okay. So how, yeah. So how would I negotiate a price for that? So let me ask you a question. Yeah. If the seller has a $30,000 mortgage or a $50,000 mortgage, or let's say even a $60,000 mortgage. Yeah. Does that change what the house is worth? Not really. Not really. No. So why is it going to change your offer? True. Okay. So you, that's it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's what the cash buyer is willing to buy it, buy it for. I care okay. less. How, if somebody tells me, well, I owe this, I don't, it's not how much you owe, it's how much the house is worth, right? Yeah. So, so I like should. If someone comes up to you and says, hey, I'll sell you this, uh, you know, I'll sell you this phone for five grand. I'm not going to pay five grand. Yeah, but I, but I have a $5,000 bill coming soon. I don't care how much your bill is. I'm not going to pay you five grand for a phone, right? Yeah. It's what the phone's actually worth, right? And th- that's the way I always look at it. Okay, so just looking at the current price, would it would be worth that at this current? Yeah, or how much they're willing to sell it for, and then you can kind of yeah. go from there. But, but I, I won't get because it's in pretty good it. condition. Like they renovated a lot of things, so I don't even know if it's a pretty good property to actually even consider. Well, what's the, only the motivation? Thing is, it, they needed to leave out of state. They like they're motivated. Like they'll leave ASAP as as soon as they get rid of it. They'll they'll leave. Okay, like high motivated. Honestly, what I can tell you is if the deal either usually has to have a motivation of the seller or motivation of the property. Yeah. If you have one of them, you usually have a deal. If you don't have any of them, you're going to be – oh, he's short. All right, good. Um, sorry, I was watching something. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, if you have one or the other, usually yeah. when the seller is super motivated and the property is really motivated, great deal. If the property is motivated but the seller isn't motivated, it's, it's okay. If the seller is motivated, you can always get a deal out of it, right? Yeah. Um, I think you should just ask them, hey, I mean, what price works for you? Then go from there. Do you know what price works for them? Uh, Actually, I don't. Now we're talking about theoreticals, man. So yeah, we got to ask. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, I just had a question about that because I never really. Ask away, man. Okay. Yeah. And I have one more question real quick. When it comes to cash buyers, hard money. I have had a lot of cash buyers come up to me and tell me they have, you know, they're interested, but they're willing to offer hard money. And they said that they do a lot of deals and they check their hoods, but I don't know. It's just, I never. I, well, let me ask you a question about that, money, man. So. What is a cash buyer? 100% cash. What is a hard money buyer? Somebody who needs a loan. Do I make videos about how to find hard money buyers or cash buyers? <laughs> For sure. And, Dude, but I then I hear, deals, man, where, yeah. bro, I've had so many stinking stupid deals. Oh my God. He's oh, nice. There you go. All right, we're good. All right. <laughs> oh, it looks like Dolphins won. We're good. All right. Sorry nice about thing. that. Um, but all right. I can focus on this. But yeah, yeah, dude, I've had so many deals where a hard money buyer, yeah, straight up, a hard money buyer, um, they tried at the end to close it, but they had to go to the points. They had to go to underwriter, all these things. Cause they have to ask for permission from mommy and daddy to buy the house, the bank. Yeah. And once mommy and daddy say, no, you're done. Cause you're not even talking to this. Like I have to tell you in wholesaling, don't talk to somebody that's not a decision maker. Yeah. The hard money buyers are not the decision makers. Right. Of course. And so hence I only go to cash buyers, bro. I've had yeah. big, and here's another thing, man. I've, the problem with hard money buyers is a lot of them are daisy chainers. So there's this, these couple gurus. One guy said he was a cash buyer. I said, all right, bet. Give me yeah. your, give me your HUDs. Give me all this stuff. Right. And he seemed legit. Right. He had the yeah. uh, BMW on his Instagram, you know, all the stuff. Right. I was yeah. like, all right, let's do it. He gives me a hard money from uh, guru, guru uh, enterprises uh, for a uh, line of credit. And right. I find out he's just he he he's on the guy's mentorship. He has no money. He's broke, but he from his guru he gets a hard money uh, letter. And so now I have a wholesaler trying to get.
get my deals, find out where I'm getting my deals from and steal it. And then he's trying to try to daisy chain it. Yeah. Hardly many people do that all the time. Cash oh, okay. buyers don't do that. So that's all why right. I avoid uh, hard money buyers because hard they money. are, um, some of them are just snakes in the grass, man. They're wholesalers on a Google yeah. program trying to screw you. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure, you know, cause I've had a couple of them and uh, they're interested in a lot of deals, but I'm not really comfortable with hard money yet at don't, all. So don't be the only way I take hard money. If I buy the deal and then I wholetail it, that's okay. it because right. it's on the market and I can kind of screw yeah. somebody. Uh, but yeah, I will also take some hard money. If somebody gives me a $5,000 non-refundable EMD deposit and they yeah. have to close by a certain date, because I have on multiple occasions, st- I literally said, stole five grand from somebody because their hard money lender said no on it. I just took the five oh, grand. Okay. That took makes the sense. Five grand, I gave two grand to the seller to extend it, and I kept the three grand for myself, and I went to a next one. I love yeah. it. It's a win-win for you either way. Yeah. Hard money uh, buyers don't do that, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to make sure. But besides that, I'm going to check with that guy, see what I could work out with him. See if yeah, I just, I'd just i hate for you to get like a big deal that could change your life and you get screwed by a, a wholesaler at a guru program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make sure. But yeah, I appreciate man. everything. I mean, if I have questions, I'll call him back another day. So. Appreciate it, dude. Let me know if you got any yeah, other questions. Man. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you have a good night. You too. Follow him. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. I was watching a little bit of the Dolphins game on the side. And it was a big third down, and uh, Javon Holland picked it off. And uh, maybe they kick a field goal here. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, I, th- I think they'll kick a field goal and probably win the game. But, yeah, oh, no, no, two is rolling. Oh, oh my God, I almost picked it. They're too far to even kick a field goal there. Well, what am I going to do? Oh, whatever. Chris, what is up? Hey, Zach, how's it going? I'm blessed, man. What's up? How so, can I help you out? So – I'm like completely brand new to wholesaling and I live in uh, California. I live in LA County to be exact, like an hour out of uh, downtown LA. So my question is in my area, the average, the medium house uh, home price is four fifty, and um, I'm able to, no, I'm in Enola Valley. So I'm North of uh, Los Angeles, like an hour. Okay. Look at the map. So my question is with cash buyers, I know you say you should only you only need like five, but when you when I did the like list source, um, what is considered like a good market because like in a sense of cash buying? Because within the last year in my area, there's three hundred cash buyers, like houses purchased for cash. So is that good or would you say like I should move like try to go into Fresno? Um where, where are you specifically again? I'm just going to pop it up on here. Uh, Lancaster and Palmdale. Oh, Palmdale. Yeah. Okay. It's actually not bad. Um, I would probably do a 50-50 approach. That's okay. going to be my best advice for you. Um, okay. I would try wholesaling half in there and then half in a virtual market you choose. Okay. Because um, cause I do have uh, – because I remember you, I remember your dad saying about pr- how probates in California are weird in the sense of they have to get it appraised and then they can uh, sell the probate. I don't, but I do have access. I can get the probate list pretty easily. So, I mean, would you just say, just go all in and there? And then, because I do have uh, friends in Texas and I have, um, there are two of my best friends, one's in Texas and one's in Tennessee. And I have like boots on the ground for that. We're in Texas and we're in Tennessee. Uh, Knoxville and then uh, College Station. Ooh. Um, I would probably avoid probates in California and I'd probably do the probates in those two places. Okay. College Station would be a little better, but um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the info and then it helped like and then i guess my last question is mindset like i've been like i started tried cold calling and for some reason i'm just freezing up for whatever it may be and i just don't know how to get past myself so i guess what how would be the like i guess not the mindset but like just would you tell yourself like when you first started like this is going to change my life and i'm sorry do you have any hobbies uh, I like, I enjoy working out. Working out. That's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, working out and then watching football. Like I'm watching the uh, Dolphin game right now too. Okay. Um, I can tell you about working out, dude. Um, you probably – I wasn't nervous starting out to work out, but it's like how do you get really big in the gym, right? Besides yeah, taking steroids and drugs that are really bad for you. Consistency. And doing it, right? Yeah. So you're asking me like – you're like, Zach, my bench is 50 pounds. How do I get up to 315? Yeah. What am I going to tell you? Be consistent. Keep going. Dude, you know the answer. Yeah. You're asking a question to the answer you already know. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, I mean, having you make me say that out loud makes a lot of sense. I just, I feel like I'm getting in my own way and I just don't know how to mitigate it, I guess is my, is what I'm struggling with. But I mean, I mean, I did find some new motivation as of like the, like last yesterday, cause my dog passed and not being able to afford to take care of him, uh, uh, not being able to give him the procedure. It just like really set me up like to fire, fire myself. It's like, you know, when I get another dog, I'm going to be able to afford it and I'm going to help out like just in general with, you know, vet bills that just like kind of fired me up. But, um, but yeah. yeah, I guess I just, I just, I am just scared of cold calling for some reason. And I don't know why, because I do. I really haven't done it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That can be you're scared. Fun. You're scared. It will pull up. Yeah. You haven't done enough of it. Yeah. But, right. well, I, yeah. I appreciate it a lot, Zach. Thank you so much. That's it, man. All right, appreciate it, dude. I think there's a lot of um, – it's kind of funny, but, like, I think so many people are so nervous to get started in wholesaling real estate. And, honestly, you got to kill those nerves because you just got to do it. And, yeah, it sucks to do it. But you're going to be at a better spot than you were last time. And that you just got to keep those feet moving. You just got to keep doing the calls. That is what's gonna, that's what it takes to become successful in this business. Oh, man. Tristan. Hey, man. What's going on? I'm blessed, man. What's up? How can I help you out? Uh, um, well, I got a couple. It's just an update. Um, I think I talked to you on Thursday, but Friday was awesome, man. I think I got like three more code violation lists and a bunch of fire damage properties in the area. So lots of stuff to do. But so I was, I was calling on Saturday, and uh, I got in contact with somebody from this fire damage property. And I guess I'm kind of asking on how fast I should move on this because she she had a fire in the attic. Sounds like the roof is, you know, going to be messed up, going to need a new roof. Structurally, the house is okay. But she is still figuring out what is salvageable through the insurance company. And I told her I'd follow up with her like on Wednesday. Is this something you think I should just go there and kind of get pictures and like make an offer as soon as I can or kind of just wait for the insurance check to come? I'm going to be honest. I'd wait for the insurance check. Okay. Um, okay. It's just, it's like going after a house that got damaged from a hurricane. They're going to be like, wait, I'm not going to wait to sign until I get the insurance check done. Right. Yeah. Um, because what that insurance check is going to do is actually going to affect what offer they want on the house. So I'm going to wait. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I got, I got the old like, Oh my, my neighbor will pay this. And I'm like, Oh yeah, whatever. Um, but I'm not going to do anything until that insurance checks done. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Cause I, I was building up good rapport with her and she seems like a nice lady and she wants to get out of here quick, but they just need to figure it out. So, yeah. um, wait, um, yeah, you're gonna have to wait for that one. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, had, I had another question. I was I was like just going through all your uh, videos on your website and came across one of these videos on your 30 day whole challenge or wholesaling challenge talking about, you know, having a LLC when you're getting into this. Should I just set it up now to get it out of the way or Do you like, watch is the it video? This, I, I've been getting through it and it's like you can like when you get it under contract, you can still assign it to your LLC. But I'm asking if I should just get it going now. So like. I could have Bro, it ready for the first deal. Do don't do a deal until you get two deals first. Okay. Don't do an LLC until you get two deals. Have you done okay. two deals? No. No LLC. All right. Cool, man. Cool. Simplify it, man. Awesome, awesome. All right, yeah, that's um, that's all I had to say. I'm grinding, and uh, it's it's coming, man. It's coming. I think I had like 100 calls on Saturday, and only like got 10 of those, but – I got that one lead with fire damage property. So anyone dude, out there, just keep, keep, keep grinding, man. So, All right, man. Keep it up, dude. Yep. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. Boom. All right.
Next here we got Ali. Hey, Zach. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. What's up? How can I help you out? Okay, so I took your advice. I started uh, cold calling Fizzboat. And it's there's one deal that's, uh, you know, potentially there, almost there. My question is, um, I heard you talking in the beginning, talking about how, you know, most people overcomplicate everything when it comes to uh, price. So I look at the Zillow price and I look at the prop stream price. The Zillow price is like, the Zestimate is like 143. And then the prop stream estimate is like 132. They have they had it listed at 130. They dropped it by 10K. And the seller agreed to put under contract with me for 90K. But now the problem is um, they, they don't have a picture of the second bedroom. And they don't have a picture of the washroom either. So I told them, I can only send you the contract after getting the pictures and a video walkthrough. Why are you doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Am I overcomplicating it? What? I'm probably overcomplicating it, right? Dude, let's, let's pop this up. I, I always put on this thing, man. I always put it up. You need to simplify things. You need to okay. simplify things. All right. Lock it up. What's the worst case scenario you get under contract? What's the worst case scenario? I ask for a price reduction. That's it. And guess what? Why are you going to ask for a price reduction? Because I saw the condition of the house after they sent me the video. Oh, because the seller is wrong about it. Because the seller is wrong about it. Not because you're, you're a greedy guy who just wants money. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I should just lock it up for now. Just lock it up, dude. You're over, don't overthink it. I literally, I, 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 I ranked it for an hour to say overthink. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Listen to me, man. The worst case scenario, another wholesaler goes there, and destroys the deal, right? That's By true. Not taking action. So yeah. But like, my worry is, um, I don't know if I could find a cash buyer that will buy it for like, let's say a hundred. Why? If I wanted to make ten k. Um, just because I don't know the actual value of the house. It's, it's kind of run down. It's beat up. So why don't you just ask, uh, cash buyers? What was that? Sorry. Why don't you just ask the cash buyer? Oh, okay. Yeah. Start calling cash buyers and then asking them. Okay. Um, what's the worst they said? The worst they could say is that's too much, right? Yeah. I see. Alternatively, maybe I could send it over to you guys. Sure, but I, I'd rather you get the deal yourself. True. True. I mean, I could be your crutch, but I, why don't you just do it? Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, you, man. Uh, yeah, you made it simple for me. Dude, that's how you have to do it, man. I promise you, the simpler you make it, the actual mo more money you make. That's true. Go for no. Go for no, dude. You, I, I think you went for no. I'd be like, all right, if, if I see Zillow's at 130, let's just offer 80. Why not? And if they said 90, I'd probably be like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it was at 130. They reduced it by 10. And then I reduced it by 90. She told me, let's go up to 100. I said, no, I can't do that. And they agreed to 90. Dude, you kept your, uh, kept your ground, man. Yeah. Just go find a cash buyer, sell for 100, make 10K, and sell off to the sunset. Okay, hopefully, man. I'll keep you updated. All right, man. Keep it up, dude. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you, Appreciate man. Appreciate it. Have a great one, man. You too. Boom. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Dolphins won. So, feeling good, feeling good. <laughs> so, what's up? Yo, Zach, what's going on? What's up, man? Man, I had a couple questions. Let me get through it. All right. Let them rip. Oh, let me find them. I ain't know I was gonna be next up. I got them right here to hold on. See what they have. All right. So when I'm using um, 
This is on this is for on on market on question. All right, so when I'm when I'm putting the offer in, I do my terms. I do um like proof of funds, and I say cash. Can I still say that if I'm getting like? Cause sometimes I do have buyers form, but if I don't, can I still put that if I'm using um uh, um proof of letter, proof of letter funds? Can yeah, I just say you're doing with your partner. Should be fine. I'm saying, but you know, when they if if it do get locked up, you know they ask for like if I don't have a buyer on one, and they you know they asking for you know the cash. Is it okay for me to um still use the proof of funds, even though I'm saying funding cash? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's gonna be you and your partner together on the deal. Yeah, you know, oh, like that. Either way, it go. That's what it's gonna end up to. But yeah. just, just, all right, I get it. All right, the next one is. Hold on. All right, when I'm looking up the um probates. The um, if it's not the PR, the um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's, um, try it. The petitioner, put. Oh no, I had it written down. Petitioner. Yeah. Um, they say they can go up to be the the executor. Can I still reach out to them? That's better than reaching out to like the beneficiaries. Yeah, like reach that. out to them. All right, Why not? all right. I've been doing that. That's why I'm trying to make sure. All right, one more other one. Anything else? All right, yeah. Another thing. All right, you know how you say market consistently? Right. Yes. Let's say if you run through your your leads or whatever you put for the month or whatever. So would you just double back on the leads, whatever you got for the month, and then as soon as your date and time comes for a new month, pull them just so you stay consistently or how many leads are we talking? Um it was really just a random question, but the last time I pulled on the last month, it was like by like two thousand, like a long to that. Pull extra leads. Put extra leads, dude. I you know I can go forever on extra leads. So yeah, it's never uh, pull extra leads. Yeah, so e even if you do pull extra, just make sure whenever that time the same time of damn month come, you pull again. Yeah, you still on time. Yeah, do the money making lists and then do the extra ones after. All right, and when you and I already know when you say when you find the ARV, and it, you is right about that too. The ARV don't really matter. Oh, you know that. <laughs> but I had two deals that came and I, I I didn't know the ARV and still made good good profits on them. I just wound up getting them for a real good price. And I still didn't know the ARV to this day. Dude, um, it doesn't matter, right? And I just was looking at the ARV on, on well, not the ARV, but but what the buyer just sold. And it is good to have relationships. So I was just checking in on to see how the flip went. And she working on another one that I brought from her. But the house sold for like, like just three something. I just checked it on Zillow. And I had them locked up for like one thirty and sold up for like one forty. So she made a good, she made a good, nice on um, profit on it too. But I'm just getting what you saying. Like it is good to get them for just a good price, even if you don't know the own um, the own um, ARV. Dude, I say it because it works, man, and that's why I say it. Because you've done it, I've done it, and we're li we're both living proof that that works, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I ain't gonna lie, like, I already know, like, you proof and, like, how you, you know, you show everything. I already know you real deal. But I was looking at two on, two on billionaires on, and, and on real estate. And he was just saying, they was just talking. He was like, what's more important? He was like, marketing or sales. And, um, and I remember I was watching your, one of your videos and you were like, a better marketer is better than to kill a salesman because he can get in front of uh, um, people more. But, the um, billionaire was basically like, both on business, but they was basically like marketing. Cause they was like, oh, I was, so, I got so good at selling that it turned to a liability because I couldn't get in front of people. Bro, that's it. Like, you oh can say God. whatever you want about if Coke's better than Pepsi or whatever. Pepsi might even be better. It doesn't matter. The marketing is way better. Yeah. And marketing is about how you feel about things sometimes too, why you decide to sell to somebody or something like that. So, marketing all, all day. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. Amazon so, was one of the best prices, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. And what I was getting to, I know you said when you find the um the ARV, what would you say discount though? 
Like, like, let's say if I found the RV in the house was like, let's just say I did find a good one, a a a, a good comp, the uh, and it was like two thirty. Uh, I would say depends. Two thirty, I'd do eighty percent RV minus repairs. All right, so no, no, you know, I already know how you run the formula thing. But yeah. just the day you were saying take a certain percent off, but just use the formula. Because you were saying find your find the ARV, take a certain percent off. You're gonna have to if you're doing ARV, you gotta add in repairs. All right, so just run the same formula. Don't that's basically the the, the, the taking off you were saying. Yeah. Oh, all right, then I still got it. Well, yeah, well that's um that's all I got for right now. So um all right, I, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, dude. If you got any more questions, reach out. All right. All right. Boom! All right, guys. So in the witness of an hour 30, I taught you guys how to give instant offers, how to get the best deals possible. And I watched the Dolphins win with only 16 points, which whatever, we will that is for another day. But as long as we got that, we got the W, and I got to give the W to the people, learning wholesaling real estate. It's a win-win today, right? So uh, how can you lose uh, for that? So guys, if you got any value from this video, do me a big favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Go below to freelancing.com, and I'll see you guys soon. This is Zach and signing out. See y'all on Tuesday. Have a blessed one, guys.